Hi there, I'm Clifford Bates, and welcome once again to Reading Aristotle's Politics. Um, we're continuing on Book 4 of the Politics, which we're now, today, looking at Chapter 4. Um, in summary, like Chapter 1 of it was the reintroduction to the, 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 the practical text. It kind of talked about the need for what art and science is, and what's the best question of trying to achieve what the best is, and you know, then looking at the question of what is well, what is best in that, what is simply best, what is best for us, and what is best for most, right? Um, um, then um, we turn to the second chapter, which was the uh, a return to kind of the, the, the typology of the regime, uh, the classical and, and three, the, the twofold, you know, one few many good, therefore the three correct with three dreams and the three deviant regimes. But then he sets that aside. He says, okay, no, 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 we're going to set that aside. Uh, and therefore kind of you know, thrushing, pushing away the whole discussion of correct, you know, and saying that we're going to look at this this from the point of view of this and then sets up a, a, a five-stage thing was going to happen. And then he basically last chapter talked about what the regime was, which was an arrangement of offices of the parts, the parts of the city. We had discussion of the parts of the, what are the parts? It's an arrangement of parts, and with, with one with a part that's ruling it, and, and therefore it's an aggregate construction, arrangement of offices uh, uh, made up of citizens of, and the different parts. The parts are uh, uh, households, but the households have different economic conditions. The um, and uh, 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 there's also the, uh, the distinction between. The armed and unarmed, and the the, the 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 multitude and the notables or the elite, right? Um, and that therefore, it, 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 the city, therefore, the regimes are going to differ because of this. And he also set up that there's basically, and in one sense, we see that there's two really fundamentally two different types of regimes. The argument is either one of the people, or one of the elites. One of the people are going to be ruling, and therefore, the so-called two. That there's two kind of harmonies or two kind of. Tuk uses those thing the winds, the metaphor of the, there being two winds, and all everything else of being subordinate to that. It's the same thing uh, uh, with the harmonies. There's two harmonies. He makes the reference, and therefore we end the last discussion with that. There's also mixtures, and the mixtures of deviation are kind of not deviation, but the variations on the uh, uh, of the type. So therefore, now we 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 start out with. The, the perception of democracy, and he's going to be saying that it's two, principal two things: democracy and oligarchy. We seem to be, these tend to be the, pre, the two most noticeable types of regimes. Now, this we're going to be starting right out in chapter four, where he says, "Okay, the question is, one should not regard democracy as some uh, have accustomed to do uh, uh, now, as existing simply wherever the multitude has authority." Since in oligarchies and indeed everywhere in the majority, uh, the majority has a has authority. Nor oligarchy as where wherever the few have uh, had the authority over the regime. So we're going to be saying we shouldn't understand democracy and oligarchy in terms of of whether it being few or many. Okay, that the few have uh, democracy is where the many the multitude has authority, and where the uh, oligarchy is where there is the few. Saying there's going to be always in every city there's always going to be, uh, any regime there's always going to be the majority ruling the the the, 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 the strongest part ruling okay the uh, the one that has the most authority and the most compelling virtue thing right continues for if the male inhabitants of a city were one thousand uh, 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 three hundred and all and a thousand of the uh, of those that are wealthy and gave no share to ruling to the three hundred poor. Though uh, 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 these were free persons and similar in respect, no one would assert that they were under a democracy. Okay, see that now. This is this is he's now repeating the claim that he did in book three, book three after book I think I think in eight chapter eight yeah book three chapter eight we did the same thing saying that it's accidental the number few and many is accidental so he's he's. Repeating the argument which destructed, deconstructed the original typology, right? One few and many being criteria. And again, he's basically saying we shouldn't care about the, this idea that the, the, what really shapes it is few and many, right? Let's continue. Um, similarly, if the poor were a few, but superior to a majority of well off persons, 
No one would describe this sort of thing as oligarchy. If the others had no prerogative of the prerogatives at all, they were well, uh, 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 although they were wealthy. Okay, so therefore you couldn't, you know, this idea that you wouldn't call if a few who were uh, 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 poor had the control of the regime. Um, and that the major, uh, the many were wealthy, but they had no say in the regime. Uh, that you couldn't call that an oligarchy. Okay. So again, the, uh, he's suggesting that manyness or fewness of those who are authority may be less of a role in defining what democracy means and what oligarchy means. Okay. He's not saying that those things don't matter. He's saying the, the fewness and the manyness, but rather it's not really defining what democracy and uh, oligarchy means, right? Um, it, it must be, uh, uh, it must, uh, 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 it must rather be said, therefore, that the rule of the people exists where free persons have authority, an oligarchy where the wealthy have it. Okay. So when the free people have authority, democracy is when the, the free people have authority, that all people who are free born, they have authority, and oligarchy is where the wealthy have authority. But in turns, it turns out that the f former are many uh, and the latter few. For many are free, but few are wealthy. So therefore, this is, it's, again, this, it's accidental. That what, is, what is the principle governing the democracy? Is that, freedom, that all the free should rule, the freeborn should rule. Um, everyone who is freeborn should have a say, okay? And if um, the, uh, uh, what about the, Oligarchy is at the wealthy. Okay, so therefore there's a specific claim. All and the question of their, their manyness or their fewness is accidental to the claim. Okay. Otherwise, uh, 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 there would be a, uh, there will be an oligarchy where they distributed uh, uh, offices on the basis of size, such as happens in Ethiopia, or on the basis of good looks, for the number of both good-looking and tall people are few. Now, this is uh, 16 is a, a, in the reference to Herodotus, right? Book 3, chapter uh, 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 20. Um, so therefore, in other words, if we're going to do fewness in that, the, okay, well, let's, let's make him people who are very tall. They're going to be few. The taller should rule the short, okay? Or be good-looking. The good-looking people are more, are rarer, right? Extremely good-looking people. Therefore, they are, they should be the ruling one. This is kind of absurd. He wants to make the absurd. He's kind of reductio and absurding the argument of that fewness uh, or uniqueness is a criteria that we should select it. Yet neither is it adequate to define these regimes by these things alone. In other words, it, it is. Uh, it, yet neither it, is it adequate to define these things alone as the rich and wealthy, right? But since there are a number of parts, both in the case of rule of the rule and of the people, no, no, sorry, uh, parts, both in the case of the rule of the people and of the oligarchy, it must be grasped further that the rule of the people does not exist even when a few free people or, uh, rule over a majority who are not free, as in Apollonia on Ionia Sea, for example, or Thea, in which each of these cities who uh, 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 cities, those who were outstanding both in, uh, in good birth and account of descent from uh, 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 the first settlers of the colonies, a few among many held the prerogatives. Nor is there the rule of the people where the wealthy rule, though being preeminent in number, uh, uh, as was formerly uh, the case of Colophon, where the majority possesses large properties prior to the war against the Lydians. So in chapter 17, the war, this is example, he, he access that the, the war between the Caliphans and the kingdom of Lydia occurred in the first half of the seventh century. You get this account in the fir, our first book of Herodotus, right? Um, so, okay, you get. So therefore, this is like, he's, he's basically now, in, in, his, this, in this, this, this sentence, long sentence, what he's done here is he says that, okay, um, he gives exceptions of this, of the, 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 the cases where, the, you, it's it's difficult to call it democracy when you have uh, a few people because of their just good birth and descent who, 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 who uh, the non-free right and likewise um, uh, uh, the case of uh, uh, the first settlers right that this is it's it's um, what is it that um, 
of uh, the Thea, right? Uh, Apollonia, uh, Apollonia and Ionia, or C or Thea. And these are case, cases that sense are uh, the first settlers and colonies. Nor is there the rule of the people where the wealthy rule through being pre preeminent in number, right? So the, 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 there's wealthy people who rule, but they're really out large number. Neither of these kind of, it's the case where the many rule, but the, the majority of this, he goes, now he goes what? This is where he clarifies it. Democracy exists where the free and the poor, being a majority, have authority to rule. Oligarchy, where the wealthy and better born have authority and are few. Okay. So he kind of, he, he says that the democracy is where the free and poor. It's not only the, the free born, but also poor as well. And what else? Because uh, 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 they're a majority, have authority to rule, uh, 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 have the, uh, the, the, you know, the ability to rule. Um, the next is what oligarchy, where wealthy and the better have authority, and they are few. So therefore, okay, we get a clarification of what oligarchy and democracy means. That then there are a number of regimes then, and the reason for this has been spoken of. Okay. Again, he repeats this point. There's a number of regimes. The regimes are, are the number of regimes based are because the variation of regime, temperature regime, are based upon the different parts of the city, and which part is ruling. And, and in other words. You know what is the what is uh, give, given the in other words the number of regime possible regimes equals the total number of parts in the city that we, uh, and what part is ruling. Okay, so therefore we used to kind of hit it on this. this is in chapter I think in chapter three I think um, uh, 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 he he addressed this question a little bit uh, as to why there are more than the one spoken of. Uh, 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 which uh, uh, these are, which uh, these are, and how they came to exist, let us speak of this, taking at our beginning point what was mentioned earlier. So again, we're going to, he, st he stops, the, he introduces democracy in this. So chapter four, he introduces the theme of, uh, we're going to talk about clarification of what democracy and oligarchy is. He kind of clarifies it a little. And now he says, um, given the fact that the number of regimes equal this, what, so what are the regimes are? So let's look at let's look, what's what's why are there more regimes than this spoken of? Which are these regimes? So why are there more regimes? One, two, what are these regimes? And three, how they come to exist? Now let us take this as our beginning point. So we have a new beginning point here. Another beginning point. So let's just think about this for a second. So okay, so we have the three points here, and this is the new beginning point. As what, as I said, in other words, taking our beginning point of what is mentioned earlier. That is, again, I think he's talking about there, about the many and the great can are accidental. Not, the, the, the many or fewness of a thing is accidental. And not really defining what the regime really is, definite, defining it, um, and also the question of the number of parts, the variety of parts, the, the, the variety of regimes arise because of the variety of parts, and which one is, which part is is the ruling part uh, of, uh, and therefore shapes the pluduma, which is the governing body, and then that that in, in turn shapes the regime. Uh, so now let's continue. We, we agree that every city has not one part, but several. So again, aggregation, right? Not one part. Every city has m many parts, right? So we're back to the parts. Therefore, to understand the regime, we must understand the parts. This, re this reaffirms what he just said in the previous chapter, but expanding it even further. Um, now, if we chose to acquire a grasp of the kinds of animals, we would first enumerate separately what, uh, 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 in, uh, what it is that every animal must necessarily have. So what, is, what defines an animal? So to understand the types of animals, we must find, first of all, what defines an animal, right? What, what, what is the thing common to all, okay? 
This is necessary, must necess every animal might necessarily have. For example, certain of the sense organs in something that can work on and receive sustenance, such as a mouth and a stomach, in addition to these parts, which there are moves as if they were uh, 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 then only so many kinds. Um, now, this is 18. This is what he goes there. This is again, back again, reading AD with the manuscript of conjunctural adapted, you know. Rather than the te, e, e, I think that's right. I think he's right there in that sense. The um, uh, uh, how many kinds, right? Types or kinds, uh, 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 and there uh, uh, and the uh, uh, there uh, um, and there were varieties of these. I mean, for example, a certain number types of mouths and stomachs and sense organs, and further of locomotive parts. Right. So therefore, there's, there's, there's a variation. And not only that they have these essential parts, but even among the type the types of these specific parts, there may be variation, differentiations. Right. Different types of the same thing. The number of combinations of all these will necessarily make a, num uh, a number of types of animals, since it is impossible for the same animal to have a multiple variety of mouths or, or ears. So when taken together, all possible pairings of them will make, kind, make kinds of an animal, and as many kinds of animals as there are combinations of the necessary parts. So he, he takes the the argument from the animals, how to study the animal, uh, how, and understanding what is common of all, what are the part, what are the necessary parts of an animal, the variations, and then therefore understanding that one animal type is not going to have every variation, so that there's going to be able to we are able to differentiate based upon the parts the different types of animals, right? Um, one may proceed in the same manner the case of regime spoken of. So therefore, he's applying that what he's doing. He's taking what he's learned from natural science regarding animals, and now applying it to the regimes. Right. For cities are composed not of one but many parts, as we have often said. Okay. Now this is nineteen. Uh, 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 again, book two, chapter two, book three. Uh, 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 chapter three, uh, 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 all throughout book three, uh, book three, chapter one, uh, 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 chapter uh, uh, two, that, uh, uh, yeah, 1.2, comma, uh, 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 chapter uh, uh, seven, uh, point eight, and uh, 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 through line seven and nine. In other words, this is, the, this is his various counts of the parts of the, the city is made of parts, right? So he continued there. He goes. Now, one of these is the multitude. That is concerned with sustenance. Okay. So therefore, the first part, and this is going to be a more specific list, right? This is going to be a list of the parts, and he's going to differentiate. This is going to be starting with the multitude. There is a multitude concerned with sustenance, those called farmers. So what, uh, the first farmer. Second, they're called working element, the laboring element, right? Uh, uh, but not really the working element. This is the craftsman, the technique. The, this is why he says, this is the one that is concerned with the arts, without which a city cannot be inhabited. Though, uh, 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 though of these arts, only some must necessarily exist necessity, while others are more directed towards luxury and, and living beautifully or living nobly, right? Uh, living finely. So therefore, there's someone necess some arts of uh, the two different levels of arts, the necessary arts and those that allow for luxury or even the w w living well, living well, right? beautifully, uh, living nobly, no li living beyond just mere life. OK, um, so first is the, uh, the sustenance, those who contains those who contain sustenance, the farmers. Right? Second is the workers that deal with the arts and technic crafts and technique. And of those two different types, right? The, the, the different varieties, the ones that are deal with necessity, and then the ones that are deal with high, uh, uh, luxury or the the, the, the the higher, you know, the, the better life. And now, third is the marketing element, which means commercial. Commercial, by which I mean those that spend time concerning with buying and selling and trade and commerce. So the, the, the marketing element, right? The fourth, the laboring element, which is in the laborers, the, those who have no, not only but their bodies, right? 
um, uh, the fourth. The fifth type is a warrior element, which is no less necessary than the others if they're to, uh, if there's not to be a, a, a slave, be the slaves of whomever marches against them. So an armed element, a warrior element, someone who's going to fight the battles. Um, for it is impossible that a city is by, uh, that it was, it's, it's impossible for a city, a polis, that is by nature slavish, merits being called such. The city is self-sufficient. What is slavish is not self-sufficient. So therefore, this idea that if you're not able to defend yourself and maintain your self-identity and be, just submit to the authority of others, you're not self-sufficient in that sense. You're not a city. So he stops here, and then he brings in a, 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 a point. And this is a weird, you know, he gives us the five elements, right? The first five parts. And then he goes, oh, but then here is what Socrates, here is what uh, is said in the Republic. Though sophisticated, is not adequate. Again, this is at 20. This is Republic uh, where he talks about the first city, right? For Socrates asserts that a city is composed of, four, uh, uh, of the four most necessary persons. And that he are those are a weaver, a farmer, a shoemaker, and a builder. And then on the grounds of these, uh, these are not self-sufficient. He adds a smith and a person's in charge of the necessary herds. And uh, uh, further, both a trader and one engaged in commerce, right? All of these make up the complement of the first city. As if every city were constituted for the sake of necessary things. And not rather for or, or the sake of what is noble. And as if it were equally in need of shoemakers uh, 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 and farmers. Okay, this is mocking a little bit. Saying that the, 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 equally, the cities need, equally need farmers and shoemakers. No, it needs farmers. You can't live without farmers. Shoemakers are, it's an, an additional thing. It's not a necessary thing, per, per se. Uh, 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 and I think this is the point about it. That, that our, Plato's first, Socrates' account of the first city is not really useful. Uh, it may be a good, interesting thing to think about as a, an argument within the argument about the just city, right? This minimum, but this is not self. It's not really self-sufficient. He keeps on adding things to it, and then, uh, 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 but then he doesn't really understand that these things are different from each other, right? And he goes, "Let's continue." But he does not assign it a warrior until uh, part until with the increase of their territory and its approaching on that of its neighbors, they become involved in war, okay? So therefore, he only brings the warrior part at, as an end, accidental. And he, now this is again. Moreover, even among four persons, or however many sharers uh, there are, there must necessarily be someone who assigns and judges what is just, okay? Socrates doesn't think there'll be need for justice in, the, in that early city. There's no need for justice in that city. So Aristotle says, no, no, there's always, any time you have people more than one, you're going to have the problem of justice. Okay. Um, you need someone to, ar to be arbitrate dispute. Once there's going to be a, a, a people, there's going to be disputes. And then before you need to have someone to arbitrate in the question of justice. Right? Um, uh, if then uh, uh, one were to regard the soul as, uh, as more of a part of, uh, uh, of an animal than a body, things of this sort, the military element and the element sharing and justice, it, uh, 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 as it relates to adjudication, and in addition, the deliberative element, w which is uh, the work of the f of political understanding, must be regarded as more parts of the city than things relating to necessary needs. So then he brings this idea of the soul, or the soul and the body, and that the, uh, and then he divides the soul, the famous classic division of the soul. And this is something Plato does too, right? He divides the city of the, the, the rising part, the, the spirited part, and the desiring part, right? And that the rational part should rule over the other two, right? Um, Aristotle uh, does something else here. He distinguishes between the deliberating, in other words, the idea of the deliberating part, which then deals with this, and adjudicating part. So that the, uh, 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 and these must be, they're different parts. So we have this discussion first of the you know that, that, you know this through the intervention of Plato, the first five accounts. Then we have now a kind of 
the tonic account, which is a different account that's shared, shared. And then uh, he, through the analogy of the, of the city and the soul, we get now the need for the the, 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 the idea. What he says here, what that the the, the uh, um, then the sort of thing, the military element and the sharing element of justice, that erase adjudication, and in addition to the deliberative, right, the military, the uh, sharing of justice, and the deliberative. This is the work of political understanding. This must be regarded as parts of the city as well. So therefore, the political things, the political bodies, and that's really the division of late. This is here is those those three things, the uh, um, uh, the deliberate. Now we call the the ruling off the the, the offices of, of of the military part, right? Then adjudication, and then deliberative, right? Okay. Now he will do the opposite at the end. Book, book uh, the last three cha books chapters of book four, he will start with the deliberative, then go to the offices which the office in general and you know this which we would say the executive offices and then the next will be the question of adjudicative offices where he kind of is silent about the military the military is subsumed into the other offices okay um and the question of who is the military uh, is it does is, does is there is there a need for a separate military part or can another part be in other words plato plato apology one man one up Plato's apology has it one man, one art. Aristotle does not continue that. He says that these parts are different, but a part may be both one thing, an economic thing, and also armed or unarmed. In other words, uh, every part, everything can be either armed or unarmed. And if it's armed, then it becomes the, uh, it becomes the, uh, it, it had, assumes a military role. It assumes the role of the, the arm part of the city always is the defending part of the city uh, of this, that, right? So let's continue. Whatever these belong to a certain person separately or to someone makes no difference to the argument. In other words, this idea belongs to a certain person or separately uh, 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 or, or to, to the same ones. In other words, these, these, these belong to the same people. So again, this is his point about this. This is this one man, one art makes no difference. It's going to be this question. Indeed, it happens the same persons bear arms and farm. Okay, this is the point about this, right? This is the point I made. This is that little clause there. That's very important. This is his dismissing of the, the Socratic insistence that one man, one art. No, that, that's really not the case. Both. So if both the former and the latter are to be regarded as part of the city, right? Um, it is evident that the heavily armed element, at any rate, is a part of the city. So the armed element is a part of the city. So wait a minute, it's, it's, it's okay. So let's go back. We had five already. The sixth must be, wait, wait a minute, but let's go back. Let's go back for a second. It's because, I mean, we, we, there's something interesting going on. We had f at least the third we have the first, the second, and the third, right? The fourth is the labor. The fifth, it was the idea that it must be the warrior, right? And then he goes on to this question, which is just a derivative discussion. And then he goes to, he skips the sixth. Um, now, 21. The omission of the sixth element is in the enumerator suggests the Lucana, right? Something is missing. The parallel account in seven a in uh, uh, seven, books uh, seven chapter eight, uh, a line seven to nine, point to the priesthood is the missing element. So the priesthood is missing. The priesthood is six. Another possibility is that deliberative and judicial functions are, in, uh, are, are implicitly implied here, as they are seen in uh, uh, you know, chapters uh, four, uh, four uh, in chapter seventeen, right? And seven point eight and, and seven and nine right? again uh, chapters uh, you know, in, 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 in lines uh, book eight in, in line seven and nine of uh, uh, it's book seven chapter eight. Uh, I agree that it's more the former the priest are missing. We have to we should we are we are to look at these two accounts, and for some reason the priests are not talked about here. 
um, and that this middle account of this is not to be the sixth amount. That this is, it, this is a kind of digression. The Platonic, the discussion about Plato is a digression that leaves kind it leads to the omission of priests. That's interesting. That a a discussion of a philosophic discussion um, replaces the priests. Okay, that's uh, okay. So what's that? That's is that important or not? Yeah, well, let's, let's think about it. Now the seventh, right? Is that element the seventh part? Is the element that performs public service by means of its property? We call the well-off. The well-off, right? They had do magnanimity. Now twenty-two, he says, wealthier persons in Athens respected public service. The, the, uh, uh, lethargia to underwrite expenses for civic events as dramatic appointments resist life. And this is why Aristotle would call mag, min, uh, a magnanimity a magnificence, right? The virtue of magnificence, using wealth. For, for the great things of the city, where liberality, the use of wealth for helping people, your friends, and generous to other people, the people, whereas mag, uh, 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 magnificence is towards the city, the, the, the public life, great things. Um, so that, let's go here. This is that the, the, for the well-off. The seventh element is the well-off. And the eight is the magisterial. These are the, rule, the ruling offices, right, the magisterial. Or that the performing or, or that performing services in respect to the offices. Uh, in other words, the offices, the offices of the city, since the city cannot exist without officials. So the magisterials, the magistrates, the people who are executing things. This is the executive office. We, 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 in, in the modern division of power theory, we would divide legislative, executive, and judicial, right? The executive is the executive, right? It, it executes the functions of things. The, and the classic idea is the offices. The offices are the hold and, and everything. And, and, and there are deliberative offices and there's magisterial offices. And you talk about the magisterial offices. Um, and these are the ones executing services, right? So therefore, we have a discussion of the magisterial. So the eight, if the seventh is the well-off, the eight is the magisterial offices, right? There must be necessary certain persons who are capable of ruling and who perform public service to the city in this connection, either continuously or in terms, right? So that's the definition of, of this idea of the magisterial offices. Either they do so continually or in terms. There, are, there remains the things that we have happened to discuss, the element that deliberates and the element that judges. And these uh, 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 concerning the just things for disputants. If, if, if these things must exist in cities, then it exists in a way that is fine and just, beautiful and just. There must necessarily be certain persons who partake in the, uh, take the virtues of political rulers. Again, this is 23, certain political men who share in virtue or possibly certain persons who share in virtue as relates to the political. These are the, this is that text, it's, it's unclear. You can read it this way, you can read the way, what he just said, or let's go back. Let's go, let's go back for a second. Like 20, this is, uh, where is that? Da, 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 right here, right? We can say, this is, uh, um, uh, we can read it this way. Uh, there must necessarily be persons who partake in the virtue of political rulers, or it can read, um, or certain political men who share in virtue, or certain persons who share in virtue as it relates to politi the political things. This is all the possible varieties of that passage, how you understand it. And that, what is he saying there? He's saying that there must be these people. So therefore, if we did this, what was it, seventh and eighth, then the ninth and the tenth are the deliberative, uh, uh, as he says, what? There are the uh, 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 deliberative and the adjudicative, the, ju the, ju the thing that judges, judges, the judges, adjudicative, right? Now he so therefore and now the other capacities are held to, uh, by many to be susceptible to belonging to the same persons, right? This is the, in other words, the, uh, held to be. In other words, now the capacity, uh, other capacities are held to be. For example, the warrior, the farmers, and the artisans can be the same persons, and while all claim to virtue and suppose themselves capable of ruling in most offices. But it is impossible for the same person to be poor and wealthy. 
Hence, these are particularly held to be parts of the city and poor, the poor uh, uh, city, these, uh, the, uh, the poor and the well-off, well-off. The upur, again, this is the, the well-off is the upurior, and the poor are the without means, uh, without means, without resources. The well-off is the, the those with the excessive resources means, and those who without means, right? So therefore, we have this another account here. So we got we 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 um, we had we, we left off at uh, seven eight the you know first we have the public services of this um, and then a uh, 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 seventh right because public services well off. Uh, um, And then the element that the okay seventh, eighth, and ninth, right? Eighth and ninth, eighth and ninth. That's right. It's seventh, the sixth is missing. The seventh is the uh, the uh, 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 the well off. Then we deal with those uh, 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 of of uh, 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 we we have. Uh, the magistrates, right? The magistrate. The eighth is yeah, 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 he's right. The eighth is the magisterial, so therefore that the magisterial, the ex ones who execute like the executive, and then we have to then at the end, that's the eighth, ninth, and tenth. Sorry, ninth and tenth. Correct. I, I, I apologize. No, ninth and tenth. We we talk about the, the adjudicate the uh, uh, the deliberative offices and the, and the adjudicative offices. Again, this is interesting. The order here kind of flips the way he does it at the end of book three. At the end of book four, uh, he will start with the deliberative offices because they're the ones who deliberate about the city. They are the ones who they're that's really who who decides who rules. Like Schmidt's famous card, sovereignty is uh, is the one who decides. The, the, the ruler is the one who decides, um, and therefore the deliberative element is that really the ruling. I mean, whoever is deliberates, whoever really is in charge of deliberation, is in fact the rulers. That's why usually the Ptumata, it, it defines the uh, deliberative element of the city very much so, of the regime in that sense. Um, and therefore, that's the, he, he gets to that point. And he, he, he then talks about the question of, the, well, there can, again, the question that can be some of the same, but not, a, not everything can be the same. Some of these parts can, some can, the same group of people can be both farmers and this and that, but you can't be both rich and poor. Something's going to be, you have to distinguish between some of this. The, uh, but then he says, but hence, these are particularly held to be parts of cities. The well-off and the poor. You, know, you, you can't escape. The, the well-off and the poor are always going to be within your city. Okay. Further on account of the fact there are, uh, uh, of the fact there are former, that, that the former are, for the most part, few, and the latter uh, uh, are many. These uh, uh, these parts of the city are seen as opposed to one another. So again, because these are few and these are many, therefore, what happens is this: this is going to be um, in the city that these things are going to be opposed to each other. Okay, that's the dynamic of political life: the rich, the few, and the many. The few and the many. But these these you cannot. These will always be the other elements. You some might have some in the city, you might not. But these, in fact, that you should have all those in the city. These are things that you should have, but uh, maybe you don't make your own food. Maybe you import your food. So the trader might be your means of sustenance. Okay, uh, you don't have the means to generate your own food. So you but, have, but you have generations of other things. Therefore, you are able. In other words, this is what he means by the some of these things can be other parts. So the farmers are the ones who should bring sustenance. But the thing of is, is who delivers sustenance. That's the real point there. The sustainer, the uh, 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 the arts and crafts, the the uh, the, uh, the the skilled labor, the, the people of skills, the craftsmen, and then the uh, um, what is it? Let's go back for a second. Let's go look at that. The third is the marketing element, commerce, trade, then 
Fourth is the physical laborer, the, 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 the hogger, the, the ones who only have their bodies, the, the laboring, they have only their bodies. And then uh, 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 the fifth is the warrior type, right? The sixth is absent. The seventh is the uh, wealthy. And uh, uh, the eight is the magisterials. And the ninth and the ten are the deliberative and the adjudicative, the judges. Um, um, now, then he raises the point here about there must be, uh, some of these can be mixed, but then some that can't. The, the poor and the wealthy is something that can't be mixed. You're either one or the other. He is silent about the middling soul. Now it goes back, remember, in the beginning of, uh, 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 I think, 3.2, 3.3, um, let's go back, for, let's, go, let's, go to, uh, let's go back to that, I think it's 3.3. 3. Let's go, let's go look here. You know, let's go that's I'm trying to do this, but it's, 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 it may be useful for our point purposes. Yeah, right. Goes back, remember, go back to three where he sees the original first part, the first of the people of the farming, marketing, and working element. First, he says that this one. The poor, uh, the well-off, the poor, and the middle, right? Then the farming, the, uh, the multitude is a farming market, and then the elite, right? The three types, three types, three types, right? Of one is wealth, the other, uh, uh, um, you know, the three, three, and three. Three, three, and three, right? Now we get a different structure here in four. Four, we get here is that, okay... We get um, we get the, the the ten parts. We get we get to five, and then we get this uh, uh, this kind of break by our, uh, Plato uh, Plato's account of the uh, uh, Republic, where Socrates gives the first city, uh, 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 and then he returns, skipping the uh, 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 starting instead of at the. Sixth, he starts, gives us the seventh, which is the wealthy. He skips the priests, um, uh, which are, we only know he skips the priests by if we compare this list to what is the list presented, and the only thing missing in book seven, a similar list of the parts, which is different, is that the priests are missing, right? Um, and again, that's interesting because that's the city one we pray for. So you have priests. Uh, the, the, this is the city that is, and therefore we get philosophy, a philosophic discussion, right? Um, uh, uh, the unstated philosophy, philosophic discussion. Socrates interrupts. This. Socrates interrupts the thing. Uh, okay, that's interesting. We, we don't get a uh, that discussion of the thing at this. At, at we we have a, we have an interruption by Socrates, a discussion by Socrates about the city, which Aristotle dismisses. So a a, dis, a dispute between so Aristotle and so Socrates about the city interrupts the account, and the sixth element is is instead of uh, 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 in, in book seven where it's the city we pray for, this is the city that we are. The, the, the city we pray for, we have priests. In the city here, we don't get priest mentioned. Rather, we get a philosophic discussion. Then we go to the rest of the part, the wealthy uh, the, the thing. But notice it's not the poor that is m mentioned before. In other words, now, that if, if the rich and the poor are said to be uh, defining things, they are in the city, but they're not a separate part. In other words, it's going to be one of those parts, those other things, that, that they can be the poor. They can be... Uh, they can be all three in that sense. They can be either wealthy, the poor, or that. But the well-off, and that's the, and that these are the well. This wealth is aimed at magnificence, right? That is mentioned. That's very interesting. And what is not again? What is silent is about uh, here. If, while the wealthy is mentioned, um, the, uh, 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 the it's not in the kind of city. The poor and the the poor and the middle sort are kind of assumed to be those other groups. Right, um, uh, or maybe even the wealth well off. So therefore, that's the weird. That this is why it's very interesting here. Um, let me just go through this. Um, let's return 
sorry that we're going through this like this way, but I think it, it helps us understand this. So this is where we left off. So that we're, we're stuck with this on, for, and let's continue. And this is that the hands these are particularly that you know the rich and poor and front con, uh, this is accidental that though is that there's many many poor and few wealthy right and that they're going to oppose each other Accord, accordingly the regimes are instituted on the basis of the sort of preeminence associated with these so the regimes that they are divided that therefore that they, who's which who's preeminent is it going to be the poor or the wealthy associated with these? And these are held to be two sorts of regimes, the oligarchy and democracy, democracy and oligarchy, right? That democracy is going to be the preeminence of the poor and that the pre, uh, 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 the preeminence of, uh, of the wealthy. And the preeminence means that they are the part that is in charge. The preeminence here means that this is going to be the one that's it's the it is the one exercising majority preeminence here is that this is going to be exercising they're the largest part they're the part they're the ruling part they're the part that's controlling they're, they're preeminent they are preeminent they're going to be the more powerful part they're preeminent they're they're they're, they're, they're the first out there and they're and they like to be the first because they're the strongest maybe in number maybe in their power or their zeal whatever be they the many or the few, but the part that is the most powerful, the zealot, preeminent. And therefore we get this detention of democracy, the principal things of the principal regimes are in this sense are going to be democracy and oligarchy, right? This is the first point. That there are several reg, uh, sorts of regimes then, and what the reason for this, we stated earlier, in other words, the reason why we have those kinds of regimes is the different parts of the various number of parts will lead to a different number of regimes, right? We may now say that there are also several kinds of democracy and oligarchy. Now, in other words, it's, it's going to be of democracy and oligarchy, there's going to be different varieties. Now, it is useful to remember of the account in book three about kingship. Like, at uh, 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 book three, I think chapter fifteen, where we get the, uh, the we get we get five four accounts, then the fifth, right, and the four become reduced to one and two. Therefore, the fifth and the other four, the the other four, the other four combined to one, and there's left the two, and then later the the, the uh, uh, even the the. The, the the reduced one is dismissed as mere its mere office rather than a regime. And that only one is left, right? But go back. Let's go back to the five varieties, and that is kind of like the argument. There's a kind of five varieties of kingship that's presented there. Okay, variations of the kingship, um, and we are now therefore kind of asserting here that there's going to be similar thing to democracy. There's going to be five types. There's going to be a, a kind of variety of democracy uh, and king, uh, oligarchy as well. Uh, and this is this is what evident but what is said about the different types of in other words that it, even they have the same things they have the same organs a certain way but there may be variations of differences amongst them but they're still the more same and that they have more of this in common with the other animal they're this more this animal than that but there's going to be differences that separate this type of of, of that animal to the, the same animal type they, they very little diff, make little differences right so For uh, uh, um, let's see. For there are several kinds, both of people, uh, both of the people and the, of the so-called notables. Now, twenty-four. This is the term "gurimononai," uh, 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 rather a euphemism for the upper class, the notables. Right. This is the notables, the the, 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 uh, the gurimononai, the better ones. Um. Um. You know. There are therefore several kinds of people, and there are several kind of notables. So the assumption is that the uh, the uh, uh, oligarchy is going to be kind of the rule of the notables, the wealthy, the, the, the and the, uh, so therefore this is interesting. That therefore the wealthy and the notables, the well off and the notables are so, a connection, and the poor and the people are so, uh, the multitude is in, in a way collapsed here. So what is first poor and rich? now becomes the people and the notables. Okay. 
And now we have another point. Again, this repeats the other thing. In the case of the people, for example, there are farmers and the, uh, the element engaged in the arts, the marketing element, and those who are pursued of buying and selling, and the element concerning the sea, okay, in other words, sea. Of the latter, there is the military and merchant and ferrying and fishing element. Uh, um, uh, in many places, there these can account to a considerable crowd, as, for example, the fishermen and these and the warship crews at Athens, the trading element at Agia and Chaos, and the ferrying in Athenos. In addition, there's the menial element. In other words, so let's let's do this. We 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 have the first of all, there's the people. Uh, he says the of people and notables. Now people, we have now what? We have uh, uh, the farmers, the artisans, the marketing element, the tradesmen, the craftsmen, uh, 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 um, the element of sea, and of the element of sea that these are kind of multiple. They are. Uh, um, uh, the military, the merchant, the ferrying, and the fishing. So there's a, a, of the fourth farmers are the sea element. The sea element, there's another four. The fourth, there are four of the four. That's interesting. The, the fourth has four different sub -varieties. Um, again, everything we talked about here, but this uh, about the uh, things we have to remember all the way back in one about the ways of life of, of the household, the farming, the gathering, the you know those those things. But go, go re retain that knowledge. Go go look at what has been said there earlier in book one, and then think about what is the saying here. Uh, now, what we have is in addition to these, there's the menial element. Okay, so that's another. So the, so the fifth of the menial. Having little property and capable of being at leisure, and further, and then what? Uh, the free element, the sixth is the free element that is not descended from citizen parents on both uh, the free element that is not descended from citizen parents on both sides, and uh, other similar kinds of multitudes there may be, and whatever. So there's the sixth is kind of like the free element. Uh, 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 but are not descended from uh, 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 citizen parents on both sides, and then the other ones, all the rest, except and what remains, you know, after that. In the case of notables, there are those distinguished by the kind of uh, uh, between wealth, good birth, virtue, or, 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 or excellence, you know, arete, uh, um, education, and whatever spoke was, uh, has been, uh, 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 whatever is spoken of as based on the same sort of differences as these. So we get, what's it? Four, four, five, and six, and then seven, right? We have about six, seven, what's it? Of the people we have, uh, the fishing is the fourth, the menial is the fifth, the sixth is the free but not citizens, and then the seventh is what all the notables we get one two the virtue good birth no wealth good birth virtue education and that or uh, whatever else is done um but virtue is in the middle um so seven in the middle is the fourth <laughs> the fishing <laughs> the sea so it's interesting the sea that has four um, the, the, the four that has four in the middle, four is the middle of the seven, and the middle of five is three. So there's kind of a weird that, and we have a thing that is further elaboration about the uh, he he further elaborates on the, the the question of of the semen with the four varieties of the uh, uh, the. Uh, this, those the concern with the sea. He then is, says this, the virtue, but doesn't elaborate on virtue, because he's written a book about the neck of ethics, right? So he doesn't need to elaborate. Now we, this is the word we have a difference. He has uh, we, we, at book four we get first the general account about the regime, about the parts and these things about the regime. This is about true regimes. 
Now we go to democracy. We all of a sudden in chapter four we get first an account of the the, the general about the regime, the politeia, and the parts of the politeia, and that there's going to be. And he talks about these going to be principal parts, and going to be the, the few and the many, the wealthy and the poor, right? And that this is going to be the two dominant threads: democracy and oligarchy. And there's going to be different varieties of these. So let's we have to talk about that. So let's talk about democracy. And he will spend the rest of this chapter on democracy. This is why it's a long chapter. The first sort of democracy then is that which particularly said to be based on equality. So it's equality, right? Uh, the first one. The, uh, the law of this, uh, uh, the law in this sort of democracy asserts that there is equal, there is equality when the poor are no more preeminent than the well-off. So everyone is, everyone, and neither have authority, but are both, uh, uh, but both are similar. So everyone is similar under authority in that sense. The poor and the well-off, they're all under the same equality of being citizens. It, it makes no difference. Everyone is equal, equal in that sense. If, uh, for, uh, uh, for freedom indeed exists, particularly in a democracy, as some conceive it to, to, to be the case, as well as equality, uh, this would particularly happen where all share in the regime as far as possible in a similar fashion. But since the people are in majority, and what is resolved by a majority is authoritative, this will necessarily be democratic. So therefore, he's explaining that the idea, everyone is equal, everyone is in it both well and off. This is the most particular democracy. This is the first democracy, where, <clears throat> where everyone is a citizen. And that there's going to be, there's going to be, yes, there's going to be well and poor, but they still have equal status in terms of this. And in the, in the majority, whoever the majority is, they're going to be the one who rules. And the majority ruling is the principal thing of a democracy. <clears throat> and he goes, this is one kind of democracy. Okay, so that's the first, that's the that's the one, the first, right? Um, uh, uh, the first sort is this type. Of one. Then he says two. Uh, um, this is one kind. Another is the kind. So number two, this is number two. The first is that everyone is equal. Another is the kind where offices are filled on the basis of assessment, but these are low and open to anyone possessing the amount to take a, 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 a take part, while anyone losing it does not take part. In other words, there's going to be a low assessment. In other words, we're going to limit who can hold the offices. It's going to be an assessment. I mean, it's based on your wealth, how much, how much resources you have. It's going to be a low assessment, but it's still going to be an assessment. And if you don't meet that minimum criteria, you cannot hold, be, you cannot hold an office. You still may be able to deliberate and vote and participate, but you're, you're still a citizen, but you're not able to hold the office, take part in the office, okay? Um, anyone, in other words, uh, 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 the kind of uh, where offices are filled on the basis of assessment. So you're going to be wh whoever can hold an office. Another kind, so the third kind of democracy, is where all citizens of unquestionable descent take part, but through all rules. So again, all the citizens, regardless of whether you're well, of your descent, whether you're well, in other words, are you really, uh, are both your parents citizens or not, but, but, but law rules. And the argument here is that the other ones, it's quiet about law. There's, there's a quiet about the law there, but the assumption is that law rules. But this is the first place where he specifically mentioned. So the first two, law is, the question is, I, I'd argue that law is present, but he specifically mentions law rules. So it's, it, it, and I think he does this because he's going to distinguish this in the next one, right? It's the, another kind is where the, uh, 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 um, uh, that all, regardless of descent, in other words, another kind of democracy is where it, all, all citizens of un. No, no, no. Sorry, this is where I make a mistake. I read, the, I combined. In other words, that another kind of democracy is where all citizens of unquestioned descent. So, oh, all the citizens, as long as you have good birth, you you come from both parents of citizens. Okay, this is where I I I combine the next two lines. I apologize. 
But this line here is the, the third one is where only citizens of your, your parents are all citizens. It's, your, it's unquestionable, unquestioned dissent can take part. And, and but the law rules, laws are rules. And now he could, and I think this is why you got the second one is going to be tight. Another kind of democracy is where all have a part in the offices by the, provide their citizens. Doesn't care about if you're, you know, the words, as long as you're not an alien, as long as you're not an alien, your parents could be aliens, but you would become a citizen. So it's not, therefore, unquestioned dissent is not a, this is when anyone who is a, a citizen can be, uh, partake in the offices, but law rules. So that's the fourth. Another kind is the same in other respects of this kind, right? But the multitude has authority and not the law. So the fifth form is this one where it's exactly like the fourth, but where the fourth, the third and the fourth uh, law laws met specifically mentioned. Now the fifth law is not mentioned. We have to remember that law is not mentioned in the first and second, but we assume that it is. I think it is. It's implied, at least, I would argue. Uh, but in the f third and fourth, it's explicitly mentioned. And I think it's implicitly mentioned to prevent the multitude from being slavish, right? Again, this goes back to book, the discussion of the many in book three. Book uh, uh, three, chapter, I think, uh, chapter 11 through 13, right? Um, he goes... This comes about when the decrees, when when about when decrees rather than laws are a ruling authoritative, and this happens on account of popular leaders, demagogues. This is the word demagogues. Demagogues is one of those words that we have assumed. That this I mean, it literally means the ruler of the people, popular leaders. And I think the Lord is right to do this because the word demagogue to us has a pejorative sense of being something bad. That Aristotle's not okay. Yes, he kind of thinks that this is a, they has they have a tendency to become bad, but um, uh, but what he means here is that the popular leaders, okay, the the rise of, of demagogues or the people the the, the, uh, the popular leaders. In other words, this, this uh, the popular leaders egg the people on to rule rather than uh, 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 ignore the law to change the law, revolt the law, and just decide what you want, do what you want, not what. Forget about laws. Laws, in other words, the rule of the people rather than the law. Okay. Um, for uh, for in cities under a democracy that is based on law, a popular leader does not arise. In other words, that this idea that the leader, the, the idea that the leaders seem to only rise, the demagogues will only seem to rise where there's no the law is not authoritative. In the cities where the in democracies that are based under law. There's not going to be the rise of these so-called popular leaders and the demagogue in the sense that, that there's going to be someone. And then the, the, that only when the law is put aside and the people's will is going to be allowed, then the demagogues will arise. But uh, because as, but the best of the citizens preside. In other words, in the situation where the law arises, the best of the citizens preside. But where the law are without authority, there demagogues arise. People, uh, popular leaders arise. Okay, so that's kind of an argument that uh, that that uh, when we're and in fact that may be be an argument about the question of the better ones, the better ones that when laws arise, the, the better citizens have the authority. And I think this is an argument about the middle the middling sort, which we discuss in book eleven of uh, uh, book four, uh, the idea of the middle sort that he mentions, but he, he, it's a third point of failure between the rich and the poor. That the, uh, the and he gives the he'll only give his real defense of this and the problem of the rich and the poor, the preeminence of the rich and the poor, and why it's stabilizing, um, and why the mesos, the middle sort, the middling type is the is 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 uh, um, is something that necessary be necessary for or any stability in that sense, and about democracy and that law leads to the kind of moderation. That's right. This is the idea of moderation, right? This. This is that, that the law moderates, the law restrains, the law prevents. The law is kind of a reason, like act, it plays the, it's again, the discussion of law back in book three, the, the, uh, and particularly in chapter 16, 
316, where the, the, all the arguments about the rule of law uh, doing this, it's, it's reason without passion. Um, um, or is the, that here is the passion, people and their passions are ruling and they get to do what they will, right? And that this is why the, uh, uh, these arise. For the people who have become a monarch, uh, uh, when there is no law, when they're, uh, for the people who have become a monarch, a, a, a one ruler, uh, 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 and from, many, uh, uh, from many combining into one. For the many have authority, not as individuals, but all together. And what Homer means when he says many-headed rule is not good, is, in other words, what Homer means when he says many-headed rule is not good, is not clear. Whatever it is, uh, what whether it is of this sort of rule or the sort where there is a number of rulers acting in, as individuals, at any rate, such a people having a sort of monarch seek to rule monarchically on account of their not being ruled by law and have become like a master. In other words, the, anyone who rules because there's no law, they rule in their will, whether they act as individual or collective, that they are acting mas ma like a master, not as a, 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 a and, and, and are just... Uh, and if we're flatterers, no, this is that line. Flatterers are held in honor, and this sort of uh, and this sort of rule of the people bears a comparison with tyranny among the forms of monarchy. So this is why he does this. That that, that this this last this fifth variation of democracy seems to be similar to tyranny, because it acts masterly. It's the people without. The law, and they have without the law, it acts. It, it doesn't restrain itself. It acts as a it, the, the body comes together, acts as one, as a, as as though a monarch. Um, it acts collectively, and it acts collectively as a mob. And that's and this is why, in Plutarch, not Plutarch, uh, uh, Polybius calls it mobocracy, uh, uh, um uh, 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 He gives it a real different name. He suggests maybe even it's a different. It's not. He distinguishes for even from democracy in that sense. Um, uh, uh, but this fifth form of democracy is more akin to tyranny. It is the, it's, it's tyrannical than the earlier democracies because it's, it's, it's where the law ceases to have authority. Um, and again, like this, because they're not being ruled by law and become a master, right? And it's this kind of place where flatterers are met, uh, uh, flatterers who can appeal to the the, 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 the vanity and to the thing, like in tyrants. Um, therefore, this is why demagogues, leaders arise, and they're flatterers in that sense. Um, hence, uh, hence uh, uh, their character is the, the, the same as well. Hence, their character is the same as well. They are, both, they are like masters with respect to the better persons. The decrees are of one. Uh, the, the decrees of the one are are like the edicts of the other. In other words, um, in other words, that the, the, this this democratic rule is going to be very similar. This rule where the people rule without law is going to have the same kind of. They're going to be, act like a master. They're going to uh, their their their, uh, um, their decrees are going to be like edicts of the tyrant, and the popular leader and the flatterer are the. Are the same or compa comparable? So the flatterers in tyranny, and the demagogue, uh, 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 the top leader in the, this last democracy, are going to be similar in that regard. Now they're going to be popular leaders in other ones, but they don't come to preeminence. In other words, the, there's going to there's always going to be popular leaders in any kind of in, uh, uh, place where the people are. The problem is they don't come to preeminence. It is that. It, because the mob is this way, they flatter the mob to gain preeminence over it, of this, and, and and therefore this is, and this is one of the means by which this democracy becomes even more turning. It transmits because that popular leader, all of a sudden, uh, people turn to him to defend them against the others, and that's when it 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 really moves from a democracy to in fact a tyranny. Now, sometimes, um, I mean, we can argue, I mean, I've always argued to understand Nazi Germany, to understand Hitler, he's a demagogue in this democratic fashion. 
In other words, Nazi Germany uh, um, was a democracy of the last time in this radical sense. Um, it was the one where the law was thrown out and the will of the people, and that the, 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 the Führer, the leader, becomes the mechanism by which reflects the people's will. And we have to always remember that Hitler let, didn't really act against the interests of the German people or make force them to do anything until very late in the war. He didn't really put any harsh, really harsh measures against the population to require them to give up things to, successfully. Some things, yes, of course, they gave up. They might not have freedom of speech. And they might be pro people who said things aren't a party or anti a regime that could be arrested and detained. But um, it was only in 19, August of 44 that he put a forced ger German, you know, uh, full war economy fling. The ending of all com uh, consumer goods and things like that, full war footing, mass conscription of men, male population, and women to do labor, uh, the execution of uh, real public executions of people for arbitrary reasons. Uh, 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 um, oh, pardon me, mm -hmm. um, In other words, and, and these are particularly influential in the cases, flatterers with tyrants and populators with the, the demagogues with the people of, of, of this sort, this last thing. These are responsible for decrees having the authority rather than the laws because they bring everything before the people. In other words, this is what happens. This is the cause of this last thing. They start bringing to the people rather than to laws. For they have become great through the people's authority, people's having authority over our matters, and through having authority themselves over the opinions of the people, since the multitude is, is persuaded by them. So therefore, this is how the rise of the, the demagogues or popular leaders happen, because they are able to flatter and get the, they, they, they control the opinions of the people. And this is the people have authority over all matters, and that they have authority over the opinions of the people, uh, 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 because these the multitude, the many, are persuaded by them. That is how they, they, they control them. Moreover, some bring accusations against certain persons holding office and assert that the people should judge. The invitation is gladly accepted and all the offices are thus overthrown, right? One may hold it reasonable criticism to argue that a democracy of this sort is not a regime. So therefore, this ceases to be regime-like. In other words, uh, this is 28, this is that from, this is, uh, this is a, pro, a reference to Plato's Republic about the, the democratic regime. So therefore, this is this, this, this you know, this idea that of this is, is, is it's, that we're, um, the, that this is not a sort of regime. This, this last democracy where it's doing this extreme thing, it's very tyrannical, despotic. So it, it ceases to be, and because why? Because it's not political anymore. It's 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 masterly. It's despotic in its character. Its rule is completely despotic. It's more like a slave, ruling people like slaves. But it does so by the seduction, not through the whip. Okay. Um, in other words, the, uh, um, he has this point about this: for where the laws do not rule, there is no politeia. There's no regime. So where there's no law, there is no regime. So, but, but if this is true, then the absolute rule of the, Pom the Pombasileia is also not a regime. I think that he hints at that early uh, in book three. So therefore, it went, uh, in other words, any regime where the laws don't rule, there's no, not, it's not really a regime in that sense, he's suggesting here. Uh, the laws should rule in all matters, while the offices and the regime should judge in particular cases. Now, this is the again. This is repeats the argument of Book Three, um, and I think that is um, what is that? This is I think uh, something may be wrong here in the text. Politeia is often explained to mean citizen body, but it's doubtful whether a, 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 a Aristotle elsewhere uses the word in the sense. In other words, this, he, he doesn't. It, it's a question of. The politics is often ex uh, explained as meaning citizen body. Something's wrong here. In other words, that there's a problem that they, that this is confusing to many people. Where well, the officers and the regime should judge, the citizen body, right, should judge in, in a particular case. The law should rule while officers and the 
people, the citizen body, uh, should judge in the the politeia, right? Yeah. And he means politeia in this idea of the citizen body. Um, uh, uh, should regime uh, uh, in particular cases. Again, that's again that's again the argument of the laws in book three, chapter 15, sixteen, I think, uh, if I remember correctly. So, if democracy is one sort of regime, it is evident such as uh, uh, that such a system, um, uh, w- which everything is administered to decree, is not even democracy in the authoritative sense, since no decree can be general. This may stand for our discussion. Therefore, he even says that the idea that that um, that this uh, this lost democracy is not even democratic. Um, in the in the sense that the law, in other words, is not even democratic in the authoritative sense, since no decree can be general. It cannot be even law in that sense, right? The democratic law. Um, uh, and, and and therefore, we stand on our discussion about democracy. He ends our discussion about democracy. This has been a long thing, I understand. So I, I, uh, I hope we've followed it through. This we've dealt with two things in chapter four. The one is the general account of what defines the regime, and his first account of the five varieties of democracy. Now bear this in mind, because in two chapters from now, he next chapter will be on oligarchy. Five will be oligarchy, and then after oligarchy, he will then do six, which is kind of a re- returning it. But pay attention in six. What happens? Because the the, the, he will restate both the varieties of oligarchy and the uh, uh, varieties of democracy, but there will be a difference between book six, chapter six, and chapter, um, in chapter uh, four. And in fact, when later in book six, when he's discussing about the, again this, in six chapter four, which again, four six, which have two types of this, in six book four, we will have an account of. Uh, the four types of democracy, the types of democracies, again, which are four, with the last democracy, the fourth being the last. So therefore, this is going to be interesting. There's going to be, um, the last will remain last. What's, what changes, we'll see like this. Okay, we'll stop here. If you have any questions, put the questions in the comments, and I, when I, or comments, questions, or issues you want to raise. Um, please put them there. When I see them, I'll comment on them, and I'll reply. Uh, if you liked it, like it, share it, and uh, share it with a friend, share it in social media, uh, encourage others to you know, do this. Uh, if you didn't like it, okay, don't like it. You don't have to share it. Okay, I understand. You can say, no, you don't like it. And please say why in the comments. What is my objection? Maybe I can learn something. You know, this is, um, If you have not subscribed, please think about subscribing uh, uh, so that you get notifications and also help me build my channel a little bit. Uh, I, this new year, I, I would like to actually, um, well, I would like eventually like to get monetized because this would help things. Um, but I understand um, uh, uh, that's that's a long way away, two thousand. Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna break. We're gonna break what two hundred? I think three hundred soon. Uh, I would like to do that. I think the two hundred. So get more people to subscribe. Um, you can follow me on social media. The ways below there if you're interested. Um, um, I'm not that active on Twitter and Gab and those places, but I do occasionally post something. Um, I'm, I'm more active on Facebook, but okay, I understand. Um, and, I, and I'm not always active in the general sense of Facebook. I'm more pr- private, so if you can follow me there. There's some information that's posted there. Um, if you want to help, as because Facebook is now charging us and it's costing money. Yes, uh, you can. Be, you can. This, if you want to help, you can support this channel a little bit. But continue. Um, it's continue. So I can sort of continue doing what I'm doing for you guys. Uh, uh, you can be a Patreon or a subscribe. Sorry, I'm going to say. Well, you don't do anything special for us. Well, if you build it, if, you, if it is a crowd there, and I'm, I will do something for you. Okay. If, uh, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm just bad at that generating that. I, I, I don't want to sell this. I want to keep on doing what I'm doing, but I need help. Okay, I, I, I said, and you can do the subscribe. So another way you can help is to buy my book. Um, um, to, um, as you're reading the politics, this is, this is kind of a good, useful thing to have. It's a notebook for ourselves politics. It, it's a, it's kind of a guide to kind of get you through the chart. It's, it's my own notes. Um, uh, 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 it's a, it gets charts and things like this. That which you can, um, as you go through the text, 
It helps you. It, it's a it's a tool to help you navigate the text. Uh, it, it's chapter book by book, chapter by chapter, kind of outlines graphs, um, and also um, and, uh, from a friend, my friend thought not not uh, Lockwood. I asked him, could I use it and for this purpose of using for students? And I, I, I predominantly made this for students. This is an idea for this. So if you're going to be studying this, you know, students who will study it, please do it. You buy it through Lulu. I get the money. But if you, I understand Lulu charges and people are able to buy it through Amazon or Barnes & Noble. Um, the only difference is that Lulu, I get the profit that Barnes and & Noble and, Lulu, uh, and, and Amazon gets. But whatever. Uh, so that's it. Okay, that's it. We Next time we see, talk... Uh, that's chapter four. We'll turn to chapter five, which we look at all the uh, in the next session. Okay, take care and have a 